Top mainland real estate executive exposes state government collusion and debt scandal. Xi Jinping's pessimistic New Year message sparks predictions of CCP chaos in 2024. Foreign media, CCP won't dare to deploy troops for 5 to 10 years. Former NATO commander, CCP not ready to wage war with the US, within 10 years. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Top mainland real estate executive exposes state government collusion and debt scandal. The introduction of the Three Red Lines policy three years ago initiated a severe real estate crisis in China, causing a significant downturn in the market and leading to an overall economic slump. In an interview with the Epoch Times on December 28, Wang Changzhou, a pseudonymous manager from a prominent real estate company in mainland China, disclosed the distressing details of his firm being repudiated by a state-owned enterprise, which colluded with the government to default on its debts. Wang Huntao, the co-chairman of the National Committee of the China Democratic, told the Epoch Times that the Communist Party has always defaulted on its debts, but this time it has started to use the knife on these rich people, and it has always defaulted on its debts to the common people. State-owned enterprises will default on their debts if they can. This departure from past practices, where defaults were more commonly targeted at the general population, has intensified the economic challenges faced by both the affluent and the common people. Wang Changzhou, speaking on behalf of one of the top 20 real estate companies in mainland China located in Changzhou, Jiangsu, expressed the alarming evolution of state-owned enterprises' behavior. According to him, these enterprises now operate with a brazen disregard for agreements, defaulting on debts whenever possible, and, if unable to do so, simply refusing payment. Highlighting the severity of the situation, Wang lamented the impact on private enterprises, stating that they are particularly vulnerable, with state-owned enterprises leveraging government influence to bully their private counterparts. The practice of defaulting on debts by state-owned enterprises has become commonplace in mainland China, prompting intervention from the Communist Party authorities, who issued a notice in September 2023 to address the issue. Wang Huntao in assessing the broader economic implications, stated that the Communist Party's resort to defaulting on debts is indicative of a crisis within the party itself. He further emphasized the commonality of the party's use of IOUs as a means of defaulting on debts, a practice that extends to grassroots governments. Despite government efforts to address the issue, private enterprises continue to face challenges, including layoffs and salary reductions. Wang Changzhou noted that layoffs have become a monthly occurrence, illustrating the increasing severity of the economic situation. Real estate companies, grappling with financial constraints, resort to selling houses at discounted prices, further exacerbating the overall market downturn. In November, new home prices in China experienced the fifth consecutive monthly decline. Attempting to sell houses has become an uphill battle, and China's major real estate players are grappling with a series of setbacks, evident in the proliferation of unfinished buildings. Evergrande Group alone has left a staggering 1.62 million incomplete structures. In Mr. Wang's view, the abundance of unfinished buildings is a localized issue, stemming from intense competition between local governments and the central government. The question is, can the central government effectively handle it? Meanwhile, you, referring to local governments, find yourselves at an impasse. It's a collective failure, and there seems to be no viable solution. China's challenges are too vast. Ultimately, we might have to narrow our focus to a few key cities. From January to October, the construction area for housing companies stood at 8.22895 million square meters, marking a significant year-on-year -year decrease of 7.3%. Xi Jinping's pessimistic New Year message sparks predictions of CCP chaos in 2024. Since entering his third term, Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping has seen a large number of military and political high-ranking officials being ousted. On the last night of 2023, Xi's New Year's message, characterized as lacking confidence and exuding decline, suggests that the CCP's political situation is heading towards further chaos in the coming year. In his New Year's message on December 31, she boasted of significant achievements in 2023, 
claiming that the year had achieved substantial harvest and acknowledging the challenges faced by everyone throughout the year. Political commentator Zhou Xiaohui, in an article for the Epoch Times on January 1, expressed that while she is putting up a strong front, his New Year's message reveals the authorities' lack of confidence and decline behind the words. This is evident in five aspects. First, avoiding discussion of the economic situation reflects insecurity. Second, avoiding ongoing pandemic and frequent natural disasters exposes vulnerability. Third, not addressing diplomatic setbacks reveals a sense of unease. Fourth, expressing concern appears as an attempt to connect with the people. Fifth, avoiding the death of Li Keqiang reflects a sense of guilt. Zhou Xiaohui states that besides avoiding discussions on the pandemic, Xi's New Year's message also sidesteps the significant harm caused to the people by earthquakes, floods, high temperatures, typhoons, and other natural disasters over the past year, as top leaders remain silent during many of these crises. The unclear circumstances of Li Keqiang's death added to Xi's negative assets, and dissatisfaction within the CCP towards Xi far exceeds what he may have imagined. Regarding Xi's New Year's message, veteran Chinese media figure Kai Shinkuen, residing in the United States, wrote on the X platform, stating that the CCP's propaganda machinery is working at full throttle to promote Xi's New Year messages from the past decade. However, all the so-called golden phrases from the past decade and this year are lies that deceive the people. Almost all promises have not been fulfilled including the joke of achieving comprehensive poverty alleviation and entering a well-off society, as at least 600 million people have a monthly income of less than $150. What direction can such a country show to the world? Signs point to an unprecedented political crisis for the CCP leader, heightening expectations for Xi Jinping's downfall. Recent actions, including media censorship and high-level purges, indicate internal turmoil. CCP's Foreign Minister Qin Gang and Defense Minister Li Shangfu, personally endorsed by Xi, were successively ousted. On December 29, nine military leaders, including former Rocket Force Commander Li Yuchao, were dismissed or had their qualifications as National People's Congress deputies terminated. Political commentator Zhong Yuan, writing for the Epoch Times on January 1, stated that in the face of a deteriorating reality, the CCP leader is striving to project confidence while knowing that the party has lost internal confidence. The CCP's year-end political maneuvers aim to suppress questions about the party central. While engaging in the art of struggle, the CCP has made its internal power struggles public. It is anticipated that the CCP's political situation will become even more chaotic in 2024. Legal scholar Yuan Hongbing, familiar with the CCP's political situation, previously noted that not only is the society in turmoil but there is also widespread discontent among officials, with the possibility of sudden rebellious events. In 2024, she will confront an extremely perilous situation. Foreign media, CCP won't dare to deploy troops for 5 to 10 years. Nine high-ranking officials, including former and current commanders of China's rocket force, Zhou Yenning and Li Yuchao, recently had their seats as National People's Congress deputies revoked, indicating further consequences for these military leaders. Reuters, citing scholars, suggests that this setback is a major blow to CCP leader Xi Jinping, making him cautious about engaging in serious military conflicts with foreign countries in the next five to ten years. Among the dismissed officials, those responsible for overseeing tactical missiles and nuclear weapons in the rocket force and equipment departments are the majority. It is widely believed that these individuals may be involved in corruption related to arms procurement, and the storm may not have subsided yet. Alfred Wu, associate professor at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, National University of Singapore speculates that the ongoing purge centered around the rocket force is not over, and more leaders may face consequences. Former Defense Minister Wei Feng He, who served as the rocket force commander, and Li Shangfu, former head of the Equipment Development Department of the Central Military Commission, are currently missing. Analysts point out that while corruption within the Chinese military is well known, the recent scale of the anti-corruption campaign and the extent of rocket force involvement are surprising. 
Dennis Wilder, Senior Fellow at Georgetown University's Initiative for U.S.-China Dialogue on Global Issues and former Special Assistant to the President for National Security Affairs during the Bush administration, notes that due to the rocket force's control of China's nuclear arsenal, officers in charge must undergo the strictest scrutiny. However, the recent investigation seems to involve multiple high-ranking officers, indicating more than one problematic individual. Therefore, Xi Jinping's crackdown on senior military officials may temporarily weaken the rocket force. Sun Yun, director of the China program at the Stimson Center, a Washington-based think tank, analyzes that strategic nuclear forces are China's national security bottom line and the ultimate means to deal with Taiwan. China needs time to clean up the mess and rebuild confidence in the rocket force's capabilities and credibility, meaning China is currently in a vulnerable position. Sun Yun believes that Xi Jinping's efforts to combat military corruption are a futile and endless task. Chen Daolin, a former associate professor at the Shanghai University of Political Science and Law, suggests that continuing large-scale purges within the military may make Xi Jinping reluctant to risk serious conflicts with other countries in the next five to ten years. Realizing the military's corruption, he has concluded that if generals are only concerned with lining their pockets, how can they be committed to fighting? Chen Daolin bluntly states that she now understands that the general's claims of loyalty to the party and the military are just empty words, which will undermine his confidence to some extent. Former NATO commander, CCP not ready to wage war with the U.S. within 10 years. Retired U.S. Navy Admiral James Stavridis, former Supreme Allied Commander Europe for NATO, mentioned during an interview on the Michael Medved show aired on Wednesday, December 27 that the Chinese Communist Party is not prepared for a potential war with the United States within about 10 years. When host Michael Medved asked whether a war between the U.S. and China might break out before 2034, Stavridis assessed the military capabilities of the CCP and stated, Despite China, CCP, building a massive fleet, and despite their actions being very aggressive, they're not ready with everything they need to confront the U.S. Pacific Fleet. According to a 2021 report from the U.S. Naval Institute, the CCP possesses the world's largest navy. However, Stavridis believes this is irrelevant when considering the strength of the U.S. military alliance. Stavridis said, If we end up in a war with China, CCP, it's not just the U.S. and China that will be affected. We have treaty allies sworn to join in such military actions. That's Japan, Korea, the Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. So when you add them together, there's a lot of firepower. Although the U.S. Navy may not have the largest number of vessels, it is the most powerful navy globally. The U.S. Navy boasts a diverse and balanced fleet of ships and submarines, along with 11 pride-worthy aircraft carrier strike groups. In terms of the number of vessels, China has the largest navy, followed by Russia and North Korea, with the U.S. ranking fourth. However, vessel quantity alone does not fully reflect naval strength, as the size, quality, and capabilities of naval vessels can vary significantly. In many cases, a single Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carrier surpasses a dozen Cold War-era Soviet destroyers in tonnage. Looking at the total tonnage of ships, the United States holds an unbeatable lead with a powerful fleet, many of which have a tonnage of tens of thousands. In fact, the size of the U.S. fleet exceeds the combined total of the navies of the next 13 countries. Stavridis also mentioned that the United States and its regional allies have 10 years to prepare for a potential war with the CCP. He said, during this period, we can strengthen our military forces to maintain deterrence and influence. We also need to try diplomacy, by all other means, and we must reduce tensions. Due to military activities by the U.S. and its regional allies in sensitive areas such as the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea, relations between the U.S. and China have been tense. The CCP claims sovereignty over most of the Taiwan Strait and the rest of the South China Sea, contradicting international maritime law and the viewpoints of nearly all other countries worldwide. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.